My dear friends, Catholics across the world will have their foreheads smeared with ashes on Ash Wednesday, marking of course the beginning of a 40-day period of fasting, prayer and penance in preparation for Easter. Do you know the background of Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday, originally called Dies Cinerum, or Day of Ashes, is a tradition that dates back to the 8th century. One of the earliest descriptions of Ash Wednesday is found in the writings of the Anglo-Saxon abbot Alfred, 955 to 1020 AD. He died in 1020 AD. In his Lives of the Saints, he writes, and I quote for you, We read in the books, both in the Old Law and in the New, that the men who repented of their sins bestrewed themselves with ashes and clothed their bodies with sackcloth. Now let us do this little at the beginning of our Lent, that we strew ashes upon our heads to signify that we ought to repent of our sins during the Lenten fast. There is a reference in the Bible, in the book of Prophet Jonah, to the people of Nineveh who did penance by clothing themselves in sackcloth and smearing their whole body with ashes. Trappist monk, writer and mystic Thomas Merton, he writes, Ash Wednesday is not focused on the sinfulness of the penitent but more on the love and mercy of God. During the season of Lent, popularly considered a season of grace, biblical readings in the church focus on God's love, compassion and mercy. In the typical Ash Wednesday observance, the priest invites the people to the altar to receive the imposition of ashes and during the Holy Mass, he pronounces to each individual the words, Dust you are, to dust you shall return, or maybe repent and believe in the Gospel. The Ash Wednesday ritual born out of tradition is never mentioned in the scriptures, but many Christian denominations continue to follow this tradition, predominantly Catholics of course. Friends, symbols in and outside religion are often reminders of truths or manifestations of the various facets of our human existence. The ashes are a reminder of our mortality, where we ultimately return to the dust of the earth. The rich meaning behind this traditional practice in the church serves to remind each of us to live a holy life here on earth by renouncing sin through the uh, repairing of our relationship with God and with our fellow beings. Ash Wednesday, friends, and the season of Lent is not about giving up because it is the easiest thing to do. Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent is not about giving up. It is about giving in. Giving in to arguments that would threaten the peace at home and our many relationships, giving in to the stubborn taunts by others, giving in to the people who may want to call us names or nail us with nasty labels, giving in to people who take a place or position or the things that we deserve, giving in to people who choose to reject us, giving in to situations where someone wants to take the credit for what you have done. Think of those many ways you can give in, dear friends. It is only when you give in, the Lord comes in. And I like to repeat that for you. It is only when you give in, the Lord comes in. He comes in to make you whole again. When you are like melted wax, He can make of you a candle. It is only when you are like melted gold, He can shape you into an ornament. It is only when you are like a potter's clay, he can shape you into a vessel. Giving in, friends, demands great, great humility. Jesus did it. St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians, he speaks of how Jesus humbled himself even unto death, taking the form of a servant. Think of how Jesus, our Savior, gave in to those who insulted him, called him names, crowned him with thorns, how he gave in to those who falsely accused and condemned him, how he gave in to the crowds that, that rejected him, shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Then Pilate, who wanted Jesus to argue his case. Friends, Jesus gave in and the Heavenly Father came in. Jesus gave in and the Heavenly Father came in. He conquered the cross. He conquered death. The cross of shame turned 
into a cross of salvation. If the essence of the cross is truly understood and if the essence of the season of Lent is truly understood, you can affect change in the family and society at large by ensuring a climate of love and peace and then making Easter a truly meaningful celebration. May you have an experience of transformation during the season of Lent. And remember, give in, let God come in. Give in, let God come in. Have a good and godly day.